At the forefront of electric motor engineering, Tesla has consistently set new standards for efficiency and performance in their vehicles. But just when you thought they couldn't get any better, Tesla is now focusing on a new target without compromising their leadership position. Enter the new Cybertruck Motors, a testament to Tesla's unwavering commitment to innovation in performance, efficiency, and also cost-effectiveness. This latest development pushes the limits of what's possible in permanent magnet and induction motor technology. The new powertrain represents a significant stride towards Tesla's ultimate goal of scaling their bleeding-edge electric vehicles to all segments of the market. With Elon Musk unveiling Tesla's latest motor, the industry is already feeling the impact. It's time to witness how this groundbreaking drive unit is poised to revolutionize electric transportation, setting new standards and reshaping the future of mobility. And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and quarterly financial data going back up to 15 years, and it's all freely available. Since its inception, Tesla has led the way in advancing electric motor technology. Originally known as Tesla Motors, the company has continuously iterated over its motor designs, producing some of the most advanced motors in the world. The Plaid powertrain, with its carbon fiber wrapped rotors and consistent power delivery, represents its own level of performance. Yet this cutting edge technology comes at a cost. While the Plaid powertrain pushes the boundaries of efficiency and power, its production remains expensive, limiting scalability. However, what if Tesla could develop motors with comparable performance to the Plaid powertrain, but using more cost effective materials and methods? Such a breakthrough would allow Tesla to scale production and make electric vehicles accessible to a wider consumer base, solidifying its dominance in the automotive industry. The unique Cybertruck motors seem to mark a crucial step towards realizing this aim of reducing expenses while upholding top-tier performance. For starters, Tesla has brought the hairpin electric motor design to the new Cybertruck motors. This was first unveiled at Tesla's Investor Day as a way of increasing motor efficiency due to reduced winding resistance and improved heat dissipation. These types of motors use hairpin-shaped stator windings instead of the traditional round wire woven design. The hairpin windings allow for a greater copper fill factor, meaning more copper can be packed into the same space, resulting in a more powerful motor. This is still a relatively new technology, but Tesla started putting hairpin motors inside its Model 3 over a year ago and has since expanded to other parts of its product line as we see in the Cybertruck. While other OEMs such as General Motors, BMW, and Volkswagen have also begun using hairpin motors, Tesla showcased its automated machinery to quickly and precisely assemble these stators. This is particularly crucial because one of the key challenges with such motors lies in ensuring the precision of the process, especially in bending the copper hairpins accurately to prevent electrical losses. Now, the hairpin stator is used in both of Tesla's distinct motor types, the permanent magnet and induction motor, both of which are found on the dual and triple motor variants of the Cybertruck, while the rear wheel drive version contains only the PM motor. However, the setup in the dual and tri-motor Cybertrucks allows Tesla to capitalize on the unique advantages offered by each type of motor. The tri-motor Cybertruck, also known as the Cyber Beast, has the most interesting configuration of one permanent magnet motor in the front and two induction motors at the rear. This is a little strange for Tesla, as it's the only configuration in their entire lineup that has the PM motor at the front of the vehicle and the induction one in the back. Typically, it's the other way around. Even the dual motor Cybertruck reverts back to having induction at the front and permanent magnet at the rear. This decision likely stems from engineering trade-offs to achieve specific performance characteristics. One main consideration, especially with the triple motor setup, is to put more of the weight near the rear of the vehicle. Tesla could have put two induction motors at the front and one permanent magnet motor at the rear, but have instead chosen to balance the vehicle, which is already front heavy given that that's where most of the electronics reside and the passengers sit near the front of the car. 
Putting the dual motors near the rear allows for the weight distribution to be more evenly spread between the front and rear axles. Having a balanced weight distribution improves stability, especially during acceleration or cornering, as it reduces the tendency for the rear end of the vehicle to lose traction or become unstable. This is also a strong case for why Tesla makes their single motor vehicles rear wheel drive instead of front wheel drive. Now the two induction motors in the Cyber Beast are typically used for higher power demands. That is to say, when the user needs to accelerate, these motors work alongside the PM motor to propel the car forward. That said, these induction motors are actually less efficient than permanent magnet motors, and they're not as powerful, given that PM motors can generate more torque. Induction motors have an advantage, however, that they can be disconnected by essentially shutting them off allowing them to simply spin freely with no current flowing through them, and they have low spin loss, which means low resistance or drag on the car. The permanent magnet motor, on the other hand, can't do this due to the nature of its permanent magnetic field. It would need a small current to keep it spinning, which is less efficient. So the Cybertruck is getting the best of both worlds, where the permanent magnet motor is on all the time, and it's generally the more efficient motor. But when the driver accelerates, they tap into the power from the dual induction motors. And while the vehicle is coasting, Tesla can shut off the induction motors, allowing them to spin freely, while the efficient PM motor is able to keep the car at the desired speed. Now the front motor housing on the Cyber Beast contains the single permanent magnet motor, along with a lockable differential. In normal driving mode, the front axle operates as an open differential, but in off-road mode, an electromagnet releases a clutch plate and it becomes a fully locked differential, which locks the front wheels. This is the best option for an off-road axle and getting motion and traction to every wheel. This is also the first Tesla vehicle with a locking differential that can guarantee motion to all four wheels in any driving scenario, such as off-roading when enabled. And this is also how Tesla avoids having to add a dedicated motor to every wheel, for an optimal off-road experience. This would be extremely expensive to have two PM motors at the front of the car, so they cut costs by using just a single PM motor with this open and locking differential, effectively achieving the same thing as an independent motor per wheel. The two induction motors at the rear are cheaper, easier to manufacture, have independent control over the wheels, and can be disabled at cruising speeds without an additional mechanical disconnect to increase efficiency. Car specialist Sandy Monroe estimates that the cost of the single permanent magnet motor is likely around the same cost as both induction motors combined. Now the Cybertruck is built as a platform. According to ex-VP of powertrain Drew Baglino, who recently left the company, he stated in the past that although Cybertruck has three different powertrain configurations with one, two, and three motors, the company only designs a single permanent magnet rotor and stator, a single induction rotor and stator, one inverter, and one gear set. And these building blocks are shared among the various configurations. This allows the vehicle itself to in a sense scale vertically in power from 315 horsepower with one motor to 845 horsepower with a cyber beast. The platform approach also helps with scaling horizontally by being able to mass manufacture this concise set of individual parts that can be used in all the vehicles. This is also intriguing because of the aforementioned locking differential. Because Tesla manufactures the same gear set for every version of the car, they can also apply the locking differential to the front and rear of the dual motor Cybertruck, allowing it to put all four wheels in motion with two locking differentials, ideal for off-roading. The hardware for this feature appears to already be present in the dual motor variant, with an impending software update that will unlock this capability. Tesla's inverter also follows this methodology. As a matter of fact, the one in the Cybertruck is almost the same inverter found in the Model Y, except that the Cybertruck uses the 1000 volt silicon version. The Cybertruck itself operates at 800 volts, which is Tesla's first consumer vehicle to do so, with the Tesla Semi also operating at this higher voltage, paving the way for certain benefits 
such as smaller and lighter wires and faster charging at Tesla's high voltage V4 superchargers. Using the 1000 volt inverter, higher than the vehicle's nominal voltage can offer several advantages. It provides a safety margin, ensuring that the inverter can handle any voltage spikes or fluctuations within the system. But furthermore, it future-proofs the vehicle, making it compatible with higher voltage systems that may be adopted in the future without requiring any hardware changes. It's also compatible in both the Cybertruck and the Tesla Semi. Now shifting our focus to the internals of the motors themselves, during Sandy Monroe's teardown of the Cybertruck, he noticed something peculiar about the permanent magnet motor that he had never encountered before. There were some very subtle changes which may have a sort of domino effect in terms of causing a trail of design decisions that Tesla appears to have made. It starts with the end plate of the motor, which typically spans the entire diameter of the motor and therefore acts as a cover to the magnets and the internal laminations. However, in this design, the metal end plate has a slightly smaller diameter which exposes the magnets. But in turn, Monroe and his team state that by opening access to the magnets, it allows cooling oil to reach them and help regulate the temperature of the magnets. Tesla has then also made a related design choice, which is that they appear to be using less efficient monoblock magnets inside the motor, which is strange for Tesla to be doing. This is important because these block magnets are prone to having internal magnetic fields called eddy currents, which essentially cause unwanted electric currents within the magnet that leak and lose energy, dissipated as heat. Tesla has solved this in the past, inside their other vehicles, using a technique to segment the magnets into smaller blocks which are connected together to form the larger magnet, and this segmentation reduces eddy currents and losses, and yet, Tesla isn't using this innovation here within the Cybertruck motor, which seems to be a deliberate choice. The segmented magnets are more expensive than the block magnets due to the process to manufacture them. Monroe doesn't discuss the differences in materials, but magnets and motors use rare earth metals. However, Tesla has been pushing towards eliminating rare earth metals from its electric motors, as they announced when they discussed their next generation motors last year. Cybertruck still has rare earths, but Drew Baglino says no more than a Model 3, and it's still able to move the Cybertruck down the road, implying fewer rare earth metals given that Cybertruck is a larger vehicle. So this may be a stepping stone to a rare earth metal-free motor. Tesla is planning to make a whole slew of large changes to how vehicles are designed, and Cybertruck appears to be a testbed or a springboard for this new platform. For instance, Tesla is shooting for no cross-car wires, and Cybertruck has eliminated most of these with their ether loop design, 490 cross-car wires down to 155, a 68% decrease so far, with ether loop replacing the traditional CAN bus architecture. Likewise, Tesla aspires to have all of their hundreds of internal vehicle controllers to be manufactured in-house, whereas Cybertruck resides at 85% of this endeavor. And so it's possible that some of the incremental changes in anticipation of the next-gen vehicle architecture have made their way into the Cybertruck already, in the form of these counterintuitive design changes to reduce the cost and perhaps the type of materials used in the most expensive part of the motors, which are the magnets. The side effect of making these changes, such as reverting back to block magnets, would have the impact of reducing the vehicle's range. But interestingly, when Tesla discussed their next generation motor, they also said it wouldn't be sacrificing any performance, especially given that it wouldn't use rare earth metals, which currently seems impossible from the entire industry's perspective. But if you look at Cyber Beast specs, especially compared to the Tesla Plaid Model X, which is Tesla's next largest vehicle, it gets pretty crazy. The range and acceleration speed of the vehicles are roughly the same. Cybertruck does have a 23% larger battery pack, however the Cybertruck weighs 27% more at 6,800 pounds versus Model X's 5,400 pounds, and its drag coefficient is significantly higher at 0.38 versus Model X at 0.24. That's 58% worse for the Cybertruck. Not to mention that Plaid Model X uses three carbon fiber wrapped permanent magnet motors, 
one in the front and two in the rear, the same configuration as the Cybertruck. But these expensive carbon wrap motors are insane, literally Tesla's best motor, which has an insane power curve. And here we have the Cybertruck with a regular permanent magnet motor in the front and two regular induction motors in the rear, with Tesla seemingly cutting corners on cost using cheaper magnets. And yet, the Cyber Beast is indeed a beast of a vehicle, with very comparable specs to the Plaid Model X, despite it being a larger, heavier, inefficiently shaped truck. So these Cybertruck motors appear to be quite impressive. That said, there are other factors to consider which may be aiding the Cybertruck, such that the motors may not actually need to be as good as the Plaid ones. For instance, Model X uses Tesla's original 18650 batteries, whereas the Cybertruck sports Tesla's new 4680 batteries. Additionally, Model X runs on a 400 volt system, whereas Cybertruck has shifted to 800 volts. This would allow Cybertruck to use less power and be more efficient, but with the capability to deliver more power to the electric motors when needed, providing more torque and enabling faster acceleration. Cybertruck is also tuned for higher torque with a 15 to 1 gear ratio with the trade-off of having a lower top speed, which is still a speedy 130 miles per hour. So in a sense, Sandy Monroe is recommending that Tesla switch back to the segmented magnets inside their motors, which may cost more, but could reduce the cost of other parts of the system, such as using fewer batteries, for instance. But perhaps Tesla has figured that the opposite trade-off makes more sense, where the rest of the system has become so much more efficient the batteries, the higher voltages, and other parts of the powertrain, such that they can reduce the costs of the typically expensive magnets and the smaller end plate in their new Cybertruck motors. The net effect is that Cybertruck motors are actually smaller than Model 3 motors, and so Tesla could easily switch to the more expensive segmented magnets if they wanted to, but instead they're innovating not just on efficiency and power, which are still best in class, but perhaps most significantly on cost. They're pioneering cost-effective solutions, essential for scaling production and getting this vehicle into as many hands as possible, which will be the key for dominating the pickup truck industry. So do you think that considering the trade-offs between efficiency, cost, and performance in electric motor design, what factors do you believe will be most crucial for Tesla in entering the pickup truck market with an electric vehicle? Don't forget to watch my last video on Tesla's newfound secret weapon. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.